Andrew, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Um, Andrew's you. here from Hike to talk about uh, some of the tax savings and other conveniences that Hike can provide. Um, I know that a number of the consortium members uh, are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small niche agencies like I am. And uh, when I was talking to you guys, I thought it might be helpful um, for you guys to chat with a few other people on uh, some of the benefits that you guys offer. One of the big things I saw, um, frankly, just to be blunt, is that for a couple hundred bucks a month, you replace a lot of different roles uh, that are kind of sitting out there. Some of the more painful ones too, like bookkeeping, accounting, HR payroll, all the things I personally hate doing. Um, and I don't know, maybe people get thrilled about, you know, trying to categorize their McDonald's expenses. Uh, I personally don't. And I wanted to uh, give Andrew an opportunity to, to speak to a few people. So um, I am going to officially state that this is being recorded. So um, you guys are all aware of that. If you choose not to be recorded, please exit the call. Um, otherwise, we're going to get started. There we go from there. Andrew, take it from here. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, my name is Andrew. I am a CPA um, and financial planner um, by training. My niche is uh, freelance people. I've been doing freelance people, solopreneurs, freelance knowledge workers. I, 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 freelance knowledge workers is kind of the general term I use to cover all kinds of different people. Um, <clears throat> for a long time, my practice has been built for a lot of years around that, which is how I got connected with Hike and turned into the um, the one of the first tax pros that helped develop um, the Hike platform. Um, so kind of like Brent said, we're going to talk a little bit about what Hike does and how they do it. One of the things I'm going to do is talk about the why, right? So I'm going to try to get to this pretty quickly. I have some technical stuff in here. I do think it's important for you to understand there's a whole strategy around why using this system is um, the best system, why it works, why it's going to save you a bunch in taxes. And then the idea is that there is this best practices. We've all been using it for a long time, but uh, or at least those of us that my clients are using it for a long time, maybe you still need to get it set up. But um, and then explaining why hike is the um, why we believe hike is the de facto um, best uh, best practice solution to implement all that stuff because it makes it that whole process easier. So I'm gonna try to get through some of the technical stuff fairly quickly, but I, like I said, have an understanding and we'll kind of get through um, kind of get through that stuff and then we'll ask questions I can answer about your guys' information. So. Overview, we're gonna talk about best practices, tax structures, why S-Corps work, then we'll get to the, the Q&A. So um, Hike is a uh, back offer. We offer basically the formation, tax, bookkeeping services. Uh, we've got real people, tax pros, bookkeepers, things like that working on the back end. And then um, unlike most professional services places, we are a monthly subscription fee. So you can ask questions, do what you need, um, and you know what the cost is going to be. There's no billing in six minute increments for phone calls and things like that. It's a, just a purely monthly subscription fee. So um, because formation is a legal process by state, we're not technically in every state yet. So if you don't see your state up here, um, let us know that you'd like to sign up. And we, um, we, we kind of start going along, you know, <laughs> whichever state has the most people that want us to go there is where we will tend to prioritize and go next. So um, we've got a lot of the big ones though, but um, <clears throat> well, uh, that, we're not in every state yet. Um, so uh, good to know. Um, freelance knowledge workers. So best practices in managing taxes, accounting operations. There's three things you want to understand about like how we manage this. What is an S corp? Why do S corps work? And how do S corps function and operate? And that's what we're going to go through pretty quickly here. So what is an X S corp to know what an S corp is. You got to understand some basics about the U S tax system and about legal structures. Um, how taxes work. It, it is both simultaneously easier and harder than you think. This is one of those things I always say that's a truism in the tax world is my clients both overestimate this stuff and then sometimes dramatically underestimate the stuff. But I'm going to kind of walk through a very basic idea of how the tax structure works. There's lots of types of taxes. A lot of people don't know this, but there's income taxes. There's FICA, payroll, SC taxes. You've got state tax, sales, estate and gift tax, franchise taxes. For our purposes today, when people think about taxes, they're primarily thinking about income taxes. They are not thinking about payroll taxes. They should be, but they're not. And those two items are going to be the topic that we talk about today that we focus on um, today. Um, like I said, for our purposes, only two matter. Income taxes is what you think of when people say taxes. That's what they're usually talking about, right? Um, individuals pay between zero and 37% based on your brackets. Corporations pay 21%. You have different rates for capital gains and qualified dividends and things like that. Um, FICA and payroll taxes, this is the Medicare and Social Security taxes. If you're a W-2 employee, 
This shows up in your box three and your box five. It's a flat rate of about 15%. Half of that's paid by your employee and ha half of that is paid by the employee. Half of that's paid by your employer. If you are self-employed, so if any of you out there, if you're freelance workers and you do not have an S corp, you're familiar with this. It's the self-employment tax, the SE tax. It is gonna be a flat 15% on your profit. That is the piece that we're going after, trying to cut that down for you. Um, if you've ever you know, left a W-2 job and did a couple of, did some freelance gigs and all of a sudden went, holy cow, why do I owe all this money? It's, it's because this caught you off guard. Individual tax basics. Most people know how this works, right? Which is to say, you get a W-2, your payroll taxes have been taken out. Some guests, your withholdings on your Fed and state taxes have been taken out. At the year end, you add up your actual deductions, mortgage interest, charity, kids, stuff like that. And then depending on where you actually land, you get some money back or you owe additional um, money. In, in this case, deductions are very, very low. There's not a lot you can do. Um, like I said, charity, mortgage interest, the SALT. You could deduct, SALT stands for SALT, state and local income taxes. Um, used to be a big deduction for folks, especially someone like, Brent, I think you're in Illinois. They're, uh, they got hammered with this new limitation because um, California, New York, Illinois, states that have very high taxes, used to be able to deduct all of it. Then it got capped in the last tax bill. Um, so we lost a lot of stuff there. Business tax basics. There's two main kinds of businesses. Corporations, they pay their own tax. So they have income minus expenses, they have a profit, they pay tax on that. If you've ever heard about the double tax problem in corporations, this is what we refer to because a corporation pays tax and then you got to take dividend out, which you then pay tax on. Typically we avoid C corporations for freelance knowledge workers because the double tax problem um, is, is not an efficient way to run um, a business flat. All other business entities are what we call some sort of pass-through. There's lots of kinds, the kinds don't matter, but they don't pay any income tax. Therefore, there is no double tax because all the, they're called pass-through entities because all the profit passes through to the owner's returns. So you pay tax one time on the individual, uh, individual owner's tax return. And it can be you know, it can go to you know one owner, two owners, ten owners, hundred owners, depending on how many owners you are um, through there. You pay tax on the profit of the entity, not on distributions. So if you are distributing money out of your S corp, that's not a taxable event. Only the profit you earn every year is what you're going to pay tax on. So make yourself a business. This is why we. There's a lot of reasons why we became freelance people. Um, if you're like me, it's because you don't follow instructions and you're very difficult to manage and nobody wants to hire you. So you have to be a business owner. Um, but for most of us, we like being a business because we get to be flexible. We can make our own schedules. We can um, design our own business model. We typically make more money, um, but also you can save a lot of money on taxes by doing this. Um, and and I'll go back to that real quick. And this is because the fundamental difference in the tax code, we'll talk, I think we'll talk about this a little, uh, more in a little bit later, but remembering that individuals pay tax or they, they make money, pay tax, and they spend what's left over. Businesses, on the other hand, make money, spend it, and pay tax on what's left over. And that fundamental shift there um, tends to, can drive some pretty significant differences as well. So we like to be a business. So legal structures, um, just for the record, um, I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice, but this is all pretty broad information that's generally accepted and generally you know, known type stuff. Your entities are formed with your state, they're, they're state by state things. They're usually formed with what's called the secretary of the state. Uh, there are lots of kinds, only two that matter for us, a limited liability company or a corporation, Inc. So if you, someone sees LLC after their name, then they're an LLC. If you have Inc. after your name, then you were formed as a corporation. Entities are generally required to file an annual report, letting people know who's in charge of it, who owns it. In Delaware, this is your franchise tax report. And in California, the state of information. Illinois, some other states have um, state of information as well. Other states like Texas call it a franchise report. Um, this is not your tax return. This is completely different. The Secretary of State is going to be a different group than the um, taxing authorities who you file an income tax return with. And so you typically have to do two different things there. And that's people get confused a lot with that. So we'd like to point that out a little. <coughs> um, there's a lot of differences between an LLC and an Inc. Sometimes they're significant, um, <clears throat> but um, and if you really want to know the differences, you want, you want to talk to a lawyer to find that out. But you can use our general rule of thumb, which is we use C-Corps C when you want to raise outside money and when you need to retain capital, meaning I'm not going to be distributing profits to myself or to anybody else. I'm going to be retaining it to grow the business. 
You use LLCs if you are a sole operator, so solopreneur, freelance knowledge worker, or if you are um, holding property. Um, and Brent, I'm not watching the chat at all, so feel free to jump in and interrupt me if we need to, if you need to. So yeah, yeah. So um, one question there, Andrew, is um, do you guys handle the state filings, right? So yes. I know I hired someone through Legal Zoom or somebody to uh, do that for me. And I was wondering if you guys handle that part because that's another expense you have to cut out. Yeah, so those have to be filed manually. So what our system will do typically is we, in some states we can file the thing for you or at the very least we will set off trigger reminders that say, go here, do this, here's your thing, it's time to go do that thing. So a lot of the stuff, because because it varies state by state, the actual mechanisms are different sometimes. Um, but in all cases, we will be monitoring and making sure that you do that stuff and following up with you. And like I said, sometimes we have to have the clients actually send themselves because we can't do it for technical reasons. Yeah, um, I guess I guess some guy I pay like 600 bucks a year to do that for me. And I don't know what the heck he does, but he, he files stuff and apparently I stay good. And then I didn't pay him once. And all of a sudden the state sent me nasty letters and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, so what that is, is the registered agent, which is basically the name on the entity. And that is generally also the filings are if you had a registered agent service, you're not your own registered agent, then typically that registered agent service will also file those things. And yes, Hike will basically included in the Hike platform is registered agent service and the monitoring and filing of that stuff. Perfect. Thanks. So um, other classic example we get, I'm going to form in Nevada to save taxes. No, that's not how it works at all. Where you form your entity has zero impact on where you pay taxes. You pay taxes based on Nexus, which is where you live, where you have property, where you have employees, where you have customers. So don't, unless you're going to do business in Delaware or you're going to make a C Corp that's going to have fundraising rounds, don't form in Delaware. Just form an entity in the state that you're operating in. So why does anyone tell you to form in Delaware? You form in Delaware if you're expecting to get sued. So Delaware has corporate, has better legal protections. When you, when you file in a state, that by default becomes the state under which any lawsuits pertaining to your entity are then adjudicated. So uh, if you're going to be national organization, um, then you want, and then if someone sues you, you want to go to court in Delaware because they are much more business friendly. You've got much better protections. Um, and so that's why they have you form in Delaware because you're expecting to get sued. For most right. freelancers, um, this is not an issue. Because even if you do get sued, it, 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 you're more likely to be governed by the rules of where you live because that's what's going to happen. And B, you're not really going to get sued all that much because your insurance is what's going to be covering that because it's not like you can have product liability. You're not Toyota making cars that can fail, right? Either right. you did the job and you screwed it up and you got to an answer for that, or you didn't, or you did, you, you know, there's not a whole lot of like massive sure. liability in that case. You're not really expecting to have to worry about the state in which I'm operating and where I'm, where I'm planning to go to court. Whereas, you know, major corporations, they are, they get sued constantly. They're always in court. And so they're, they, they are picking where I want to go to court going forward. That's why they do No, and frankly, if one of our large clients wants to sue us, we're probably going to lose. And so we probably would use the insurance or, you know, fold and start something else. Yep. Okay, yep. great. And you I'm have good aware. agreements and anyway. stuff like that in place to make sure you handle all that kind of stuff. So, um, <clears throat> business tax intermediate. Remember, so C Corp pays its own tax rate at 21%. You can only take money out of the corp via dividend or wages both of which are taxable to you. A wage means you're going to pay ordinary income rates plus your payroll taxes. Dividends are typically going to be long-term cap gains rates, 20%. This is the double tax problem, right? The court paid the tax and then the dividend and the wages took out. Um, LLC partnerships, they pay no taxes except franchise. So California, for example, this is why I get people confused. Well, my LLC, it's passive, it doesn't pay taxes. Unless places like California, Illinois, New York, they have the pleasure of doing business in the state tax, which is we're going to charge you 800 bucks, doesn't matter what you do, and then you can pay income taxes on your profits. Um, you can take money out whatever you want. You can take money out um, any way you want, and it doesn't matter. There's no tax on you taking money out of that. Um, but whatever profits you make in that entity are taxed at ordinary income rates, so that's the, up to 37%. It's also subject to self-employment tax. Um, and if you want, you can make an LLC and have it be taxed as a C-Corp. That's a whole other presentation that we're not going to do. Um, so what is an S corp? So now I understand some basics about like income tax, self-employment tax, all this kind of stuff like that. What is an S corporation? An S corporation is a C corporation that is elected to be taxed a partnership, pass through, or is an LLC that is electing to be taxed as a C corp that's elected to be taxed a pass through. And I put the obvious comments. I'm I'm saying it this way because obviously this makes no sense whatsoever. 
the important point is to understand that the S corp is combining um, the W-2 employer employee relationship you have with the corporation with the tax pass-through benefits of the tax benefits of the pass-through entity. Why does that matter? I'll understand. Practical upshot. What we do is bifurcate the difference in earnings. So, and this is the core of what an S corp works. Because remember that what an S corp, a business owner, if you have a Schedule C, they assume that all the profit in that is earnings from your work, and your work is subject to ordinary income along with payroll taxes. What we are do is, as a freelance knowledge worker, is go no, no, no. Some of these profits are due to my work, and other portions of this profit are due to the return that I get as a business owner which are not subject to self-employment taxes. This is the earnings from work versus business profits idea. So what does that mean? What that means is if I've got $200,000 of profit in my LLC, I'm going to pay income and self-employment tax on the full 200. If I put that into an S corp and I take hundred thousand dollars out as labor, I will pay ordinary income on that hundred plus 15% on the self-employment, but the other hundred, that I say is my earnings from my business profits. This is my intangible, my intangible assets, my goodwill, my expertise, my management, my et cetera, running the business. That's hundred thousand dollars coming to me as business profits. I do not pay 15% self-employment tax on it. I just cut my tax bill by 15 grand doing that. Now, the key to this that makes this work is you, you cannot value your labor at zero. It doesn't matter how little you think of yourself, you have to pay reasonable compensation. And this is the game, game's a bad word. Um, this is the arguments that we make that we build to support is it, of the profit in the business, how much is compensation? How much of that compensation can be reasonable by the IRS standards? And I want that to be low as possible, obviously, because that's how I save the most taxes. And then I want to maximize the business profits because I pay a lower tax rate on that stuff. Interesting. Um, go ahead. No, it's interesting. It's very interesting. So is and that typically around 50% or does it vary? depending on who you are very very wide depending on what you are and so it, it um and, and so we'll talk a little bit about i think i've got it in here it, it it depends a little bit on how you do stuff so i also would be looking at best practices right on how you do this stuff if your business is entirely built on you billing by the hour it becomes very difficult for me to argue that most of the profits are not due to your work but if you do value-based billing or flat fee billing it's much much easier because What's the value of the work? Well, I could pay somebody, you know, maybe overseas, maybe here, maybe an entry level person to do the actual grinding work. And most of that profit is from me having a brand name. So it can come down to how you structure your business and how you do that. We typically are seeing somewhere between, generally speaking, 30% of the profit is, is going to be kind of the floor. Below that, you're getting pretty dangerous. You got to have some pretty compelling arguments about, I don't really work in the thing. I'm selling a physical product or something like that. Um, and it goes up to, at the high end, you're looking at 70, 80% typically um, is, is going to be a compensation. When I say 70, 80%, what I'm talking about is a percentage of the profits, right? So if I made $100,000, 30 to 80% is the difference between paying myself a $30,000 W-2 versus an $80,000 W-2. So most of the people on the call are similar to me in structure, where we have a flat monthly retainer fee. Uh, yep. We may have some hourly billings for content or other things that we might do, web development or whatever. Um, but generally, there's a monthly retainer scenario. It, it sounds like a monthly retainer is helpful in yes, the argument for an S-Corp. Very, and very at helpful. At that point, for it's not necessarily that I delivered X or Y for the client. It's that they wanted my expertise, the 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 years of experience, et cetera, that come with that. More exactly so than right. billable hours. And now I'm selling intangible, not hours. And that helps a ton. So in that range, you're talking more like, 40 to 50% of the profits is reasonable comp. There's also some logical limits, right? If 40% is $10,000, there's no way we can argue that a $10,000 wage is going to be reasonable for full-time work. But the same token, if your business gets bigger, once you get to my wage being $150,000, $200,000, it doesn't really, it almost doesn't matter how much income you have beyond that. Um, you know, I can make a million dollars, I can make $2 million of profit, and I can cap my pay because it's perfectly reasonable for me to argue that I'm paying a full-time job at $180,000 and then just Stop there. The per, so the percentages can also kind of break down in pure dollar terms a little bit, but um, right. but yeah, so us, exactly bringing in, us bringing in solopreneur or small you know business revenues of two hundred and fifty to two million dollars a year, it's pretty reasonable for us to cap our income at some point, and all of the rest of that would be tax savings. That's correct. 
That's correct. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's it, this is why an S corp with running payroll is the de facto standard for freelance knowledge workers that are making above, say, our gray area is about one hundred eighty to one hundred thousand dollars a year of, of and I, I use this in terms of profits because, and for for, for folks like you, for Brent and, and people on your call, you, your profits and your and your gross revenue are going to be basically the same thing, right? Because you don't have a lot of hard costs. But I will typically terms and talk in terms of profits because I might do five million dollars. I've got a bunch of like Amazon e-commerce people. Well, I might do ten million dollars in sales, but my cogs was eight million dollars on that. So I'm really only making two million dollars. So I'm typically that's why I always talk about profits, not revenue. But it's the same concept depending on the type of business. Um. Yeah, so then we've got just basic math examples, right? If you've got an LLC, ordinary income, you've got um, $150,000 of profit. If you pay, you pay 25% of ordinary income, 15% self-employment tax, you paid 60 grand in taxes on $150,000. If you are a Schedule C business and you made $150,000 in profit, that $60,000 tax bill is probably about what you did last year. If you did the same thing with an S Corp and we paid you a wage of 50, I don't like to run through all the numbers, but total taxes, $45,000. We just cut 15 grand off your tax bill. Um, when we can go through, it's even cheaper than a C corp, right? Because if I do my, pay my corporate tax and then I take the dividends out, I'm still, it's actually cheaper to do that than it is to have a schedule C, but it's still more expensive than the S corp. $55,000 total tax on a C corp in that example. That's what we use. And this is basically why we use S corp. It is the de facto standard for um, using folks like this. Um, and this is the employer reasonable compensation, right? Um, the trick becomes where this always falls down is you cannot act like a Schedule C, right? You have to treat yourself like an employee. Um, you know, you have to be a business. You have to have books. You have to have a payroll service. You can't just, you know, it's the great part about the LLC and the Schedule C type stuff. It's real simple to operate, right? I can just put all my money in one bank account and I can do whatever I want with it and nobody cares and nobody's watching. Um, and the cost of doing that is about 15 grand in this example. If you want to save more money, you got to run properly. Now, I will always encourage people, even if you're not generating a ton of tax savings, and this is a huge point in some cases is, this is what I love about Hike, why I love Hike so much, is even people that aren't necessarily going to save thousands of dollars in taxes, I still tell them as solopreneurs to sign up for Hike because treating yourself like a business is a way to make yourself more professional. It's how you become more successful. It's if you run your business rinky dink, then you'll always be rinky dink. I mean, so I will all, you know, there are best practices, not just saving money in taxes, but also in just running your business properly. Um, and I think that hype does a really good job of doing that. Um, also some additional savings. Remember, um, it's it really fun, right? Cause I can do stuff like, you know, I can put, $19,000, I can usually beat the SEP IRAs for retirement contribution because I can put, I can put not only $19,000, I put 19, I can make my own 401k, which means I can put $19,000 away, not six. And if you want to get really fancy, you can set up a pension plan, you know, state cities, you know, public unions have pension plans, put big dollars away. I've got clients that are putting between 200 and $250,000 a year away into what is effectively an IRA. Um, that takes a big bite out of that. You cannot do that as a Schedule C. You've got to have an employee-employer relationship to set that kind of stuff up. Um, the other thing is when you turn yourself into a business, remember that deductions, um, you know, income, you know, not reporting income is how you go to jail. You know, that's a famous quote of that's how they got Al Capone. Deductions are a negotiation, right? Because there is no set standard of what's deductible. What is deductible in a business is what is considered ordinary and necessary. And I use air quotes on that, but that's literally the definition. So any argument you make, any argument you can make um, that this is ordinary and necessary um, becomes deductible. And so when you have an operating business entity, what becomes the definition of what's ordinary and necessary broadens, which means I can cram more expenses in, which saves me not only the self-employment tax, but it saves me income tax overall, because is it, re is it ordinary and necessary for my business to have internet and a cell phone and pay rent and all this stuff that, yeah, you can deduct portions of this on a schedule C, but some of the stuff you can deduct way more of on the S corp. So, um, and that saves you, like I said, across the board, um, pros and cons with an S corp, you can save more for retirement. You get to keep more, more of what you make and you have to run an entire company with payroll without an S corp. You are, um, as an employee, life is simpler as a sole proprietor. Life is simpler. You have less, you have to pay more in taxes and you have less 
options and controls over the benefits. When I say benefits, I'm talking about your retirement benefits. Um, how to operate your S-Corp. Uh, it's, it's, it, this is where height comes in. To get to set up an S-Corp, you have to create an LLC with your state. You got to get an EIN for it, file an S election, register for a payroll account. You got to set up books. You got to set up payroll and you got to set up the money flows, meaning you got to have a business bank account. You got to make, have a, I usually tell people that you don't need to get a business credit card. Just pick one personal credit card you have and just make it the business card. As long as you just put only business expenses through it, it doesn't need to be a business card per se. We just want to bifurcate the expenses. The segregation of duties, segregation activity here is huge. You've got to be able to split between, to show the auditors, this is the business and the business activity and there is no personal activity on here. And that, that hurdle of being able to do that is part of the huge thing. And then the biggest problem with setup is I got to change over expenses. I got to have my customers pay my new bank account. I got to move my expenses over to the new card, new bank account. And that's part of what the process. This is what Hike does. Right? Hike is going to set all this stuff up for you. We have our own automated tools um, and we will set up all this stuff. You, you just sign up, tell us what you want to call the thing and we'll guide you every step of the way and do most of it for you as you go along. People always ask, how does the money work? Um, and it works simply like this. The, biz, the, the business receives income. All your revenue comes in as, a, uh, as income to you. Um, it, and then it pays all the operating expenses. So that's going to be, like I said, your travel and your costs and your advertising and your meals and your internet and cell phone and all this kind of stuff like that. And it will include paying the payroll to you, payroll in your business to you as an expense to the company. You get money out in three ways. Payroll, which is a flat salary pick based on the 40, 45, 50% number. Fringe benefits, which is the company paying expenses for you. So this is the company's going to pay for your cell phone. It's going to pay for your internet, stuff like that. It's a fringe benefit. That's you getting money out. You're not really getting money out, but my personal account doesn't need as much money in it because I don't have as many expenses going out of it, which is, you know, and ex stopping expenses is the same as adding income, right? They have the same effect on your net worth. Um, and then the third way is distributions. You just cut yourself a distribution check whenever you want. This is you distributing profits of your business to yourself. You just cut one or whatever you want. Um, but on the, on the benefits part, like a lot of this stuff, like I, I do this with my LLC. What's the difference between doing it with the LLC and the S corp? Like so uh, by, my, def by default, an LLC at the schedule C presupposes that everything is going to be a um, personal and business mixed use. And therefore you have to prorate all of it. So you think about your home office expense, for example, the home office expense is driven entirely by you tell us what you actually spent. And then you tell us what the pro rata share is, or here's a cell phone amount. And, and some people are already doing all of this in the S corp anyways, but or in the schedule C anyways, but they're going to presuppose that everything is a mixture of personal and business. And therefore they're going to want to see proof of proration mileage. Well, logs and that's what happened with my, with my home office recently, for example, I'm above a three car garage. So mm -hmm. I get pretty decent office size space here. Um, and I didn't get full credit for it. Why? Because of some percentage maximum. And I argued with my accountants about it. And I was like, guys, this is ridiculous. Like I'm truly above a three car garage. It's a huge yeah. space. No one comes in here and I can't get more credit for it. They're like, no, there's a maximum. Sorry. Have a nice day. Right. And so what happens is we, this is the big difference between you are a, the business making the argument versus a person because the schedule C you're a person doing business, which is not the same as a business doing business. So what I'd be arguing in a case like that is I go, okay, great. What's the fair market value of the rent? And that becomes the basis of our ordinary and necessary arguments. What is the fair market value of that much space? That and that was my, that rent. was my argument to my accountants. I was like, I was paying $7,000 a month for a space twice the size downtown. And I should at least get $3,500 off of my rent. And they're like, no. And I ended up getting like 500 bucks or something worthless. You know, and that's and was, the, it was frustrating. So that's okay. the difference in changing the argument about what is ordinary and necessary and how those things are valued, right? So same same thing, you know, auto is the big one, right? Contemporaneous mileage log. You got to show was every every mile you drove and where you drove it. You got to track my miles. For my escort personally, I just put a few tanks of gas on my business and that's the auto expense and it's done. Um, so it, it's 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 it, this is why it's so key to understand. People want to just go, oh, give, show me some trick. You know, what's the three weird tricks to save your money in taxes? It's important to understand what actually drives this because then you as the employer can understand this is the basis for the argument you're making. It allows you to make better arguments and to structure your business properly to maximize deductions and all this kind of stuff. That's why I always, even though it's 
really boring. I try to make sure I take the time to explain to folks how this works and why this works so you guys can understand. This is the argument you're making and this is why it works. So maximize deductions, take as much stuff as you can that we can argue is ordinary, necessary, needs to go into the business and be taken off right off the top. Um, <clears throat> health insurance. This is one of the big ones that people get, we get asked a lot. You do not need an employer um, to get health insurance. Um, but if I buy insurance on my own, it's so much more expensive. No, it's not more expensive. You're paying the same. It, it's just that you're paying for all of it right now. Um, so <clears throat> we have this problem a lot and people are comparing like, well, I make, you know, I'm making a hundred thousand dollar W2 plus benefits, but I can go freelance and make a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, then you're going to lose money, right? Because if they're paying 18, $20,000 a year for your benefits, you're actually making 120 in salary, which means you're taking a $20,000 pay cut to go freelance for a hundred, right? Um, so understanding you can just go buy whatever insurance you want and the deductions will typically be the same, right? You're going to, well, the deductions get wonky and I don't want to get into that technical thing, but Buy whatever insurance you want, pay for it, and we can we'll still deduct it the same whether you're an employee at a company or if you have an escort. Um, ongoing operations. How do you keep this stuff up? You got to file your business tax return and your personal tax returns. You got to file payroll tax returns. You got to maintain your entity, file your statement of information with the state, maintain minutes and notes, keep up the books and records, meaning you got to keep up your books, and you got to pay your bills and do all that kind of stuff like that. Um, and that's basically what hype comes into, right? We come in and go, okay, great. We're going to form the entity. We're going to set your books up for you. We're going to um, help you with bookkeeping and help you with compliance. It includes the S Corp. We set you up a QuickBooks file and we use Gusto for our payroll. Um, so we'll set this all up. Um, you'll be assigned a bookkeeper. You get assigned a tax pro. You can, we have a Slack channel that's just for hype clients. So you'll have your team in there. You can ask questions whenever you want in there. Um, and we set up, we'll do four checks a year. So as we're going through, we'll make sure that your books are staying current. If they're not, we'll get after you. Um, and if they are current, we pull those numbers and automatically project out what we think you're going to owe in taxes. Um, tell you what that is and go, listen, we want you to make an estimated payment. Don't forget to make this much money. Let us know when you do. We'll also be monitoring your reasonable comp to make sure that depending on, you know, we'll set up an initial number that goes based on your facts and circumstances. We think your payroll needs to be X. And then if your profit goes up, we might need to increase it. That if the profit goes down, we might need to decrease it. And we'll kind of help monitor that on an ongoing basis. Um, Right now we're, we're, we're selling at a discount. And I, you know, I tell people all the time, like I, if I was pricing hike, I would never have priced it this cheap, but this is what they're doing. Um, and it's 199 bucks a month right now for the setup service. That includes, that includes your Gusto subscription, that includes your QuickBooks, that includes the setup. Um, and it does not include your taxes, but um, it does include uh, your tax prep fees. So that includes preparing the S-Corp return and your individual returns and all that kind of good stuff like that. And guys, the link that I have, um, since you're smart and you know this stuff, uh, I do have a cut of this as well. I'm going to give you guys $100 back uh, from me um, if you use the link. Plus, you guys get a free month of service from Hike or something like that. I think it's a month if you use the link that's in there. So when you see the affiliate ID, you know, don't be like, ah, fucking Brent did this. So, you know, there, I swore for those that were want, waiting for the, the cuss word in there. Um, so I just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Uh, Andrew, super informative. Like every time I talk to you, it's like very, very powerful and very informative. So that's the main reason why I wanted you guys to hear what he's doing. Um, and frankly, you know, I would have done this by now if you guys were in Illinois and I keep pushing you guys to do that. So hopefully so there's someone else on the call and you guys will actually get it done in Illinois. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's very powerful. So I appreciate it. I would see your, I would see your open in Illinois and raise you get the heck out of Illinois. Just well, I, you know, it's, out there. it's true. Like the taxes are eating us alive here. Um, and worse. I've had friends move just to Wisconsin for that specific reason. Um, even fatwallet.com was a friend of mine back in the day. And, and uh, he, Tim Storm moved across the border for just tax issues. And then there was some weird nexus things and Amazon and a bunch of other things kind of hit too all at the same time. But um, yeah, Illinois is a tough state for sure. And, and not only does Illinois have high taxes, but they're jerks. I mean, they are just Nazis about stuff. Working with Illinois is one of the like worst states to work with. I hate battling Illinois because they're just, they're like the Gestapo. I, I'll take an IRS audit over dealing with Illinois any day of the week. Hands down, no questions. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, I'm going to open up to questions for everybody. Um, yeah. Any questions from anybody else out there? So it looks like Tammy's got a question. Yep. around um want an honor of my current people so um what do you mean by that tammy you can come off mute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was gonna be my question 
Tammy, I think you mean that you want to know, like, look at what you're currently doing and see if that is optimal. Um, we, we, we typically don't do audits like that, but if that's not, tell, tell me what you mean by that. Um, yeah, so I have a bookkeeper <clears throat> that I work with currently, and I'm just kind of questioning uh, a few things that I didn't think should have been done last year for our taxes. Um, and so I was actually thinking about having somebody audit our taxes. And then um, also my other question is, what is in your form here? It says S Corp SM LLC based, then S Corp MM LLC based and S Corp C Corp based. So uh, an S Corp is not an entity. It is a tax election and either a C Corp or a SMLLC, which stands for single member LLC, or a multi-member LLC, oh, gotcha. all of them can elect S Corp tax status. So it yeah, no, we're we're an S Corp already. So that's okay. but you you caught my ear when I heard you talking about you're like the fifth person to talk about incorporating in a different state for protective services. I always thought it was Florida, but everybody keeps saying Delaware. So you, you only, for, you, I wouldn't be doing it for, for freelancers like this. I would not be incorporating a different state. I would absolutely be incorporating in the state you're operating in. Oh, um, well, we, um, we're not a freelancer. We are a full blown uh, agency. So I employ about 24 people. Uh, same rules apply. Well, I'm looking for, um, I'm only looking for, um, so when I say freelancer, I'm also referring to knowledge worker. Right. So you guys are still a knowledge based company. So I'm looking for um, if I'm incorporating in another state, it's because I'm typically raising outside capital or I'm going to I'm expecting to have product liability. Um, so I'm making physical products. I'm making physical goods. I'm selling food products. I'm selling things like that um, to uh, retail type products. I'm selling physical gotcha. things. Because I'm, expecting to get, because I'm expecting to have much more significant liability, whereas your guys' liability typically is going to be smaller than if I make a bad batch of Coca-Cola and I poison 100,000 people, the lawsuits will bankrupt it, right? That's the kind of, that's usually where you're looking at multiple state type stuff. Um, and so to answer your question, no, we don't really do audits per se. Um, we, um, if you are signing up on the Hike platform, we would um, definitely look at what was done and tell you this is how we would want to do it. Um, but we don't just do a one-time audit. Um, if you've got a bookkeeper at the size and scope you're talking about, you've got a bookkeeper, fine, but the bookkeeper should be taking direction from your CPA who's actually guiding this stuff. And so the CPA is the person who should be auditing this stuff and giving guidance. So not the bookkeeper should not be the, the bookkeepers are the people that are, should be following policy, not setting policy. And that's why in the hike platform. Right. We no, we're, we're in a predicament because our CPA passed away from COVID. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just weird times right now. So, yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, we're actually shopping for a new CPA. So, yeah, we're in a predicament right now. It's just very weird. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would I would make sure you, you tr focus on getting the best advice you can and find a professional. You know, and like, you could, you're, you're welcome to try to sign up for the hype platform. Welcome to, you know, jump on with us. But um, we don't do a. Like I said, yeah, we don't we don't do like a one time audit type stuff. We're we're very systems oriented, which is one of the ways you keep you know costs low is you know <laughs> get on, get you going, get you on board, and kind of go from there. Okay. Um. Uh, Holly, I don't know if we um, I don't think we're in Kentucky right now. Galvia might know that better than I can. I've lost track of the number of states we're in. When we first started, we were in three states. I can remember that. But now we're in like a dozen, and I, my, I'm not smart enough to keep track of that. I'll send you guys the list. I'll put it in our chat. Thank you, Andrew. And and what you can also do is, if you're interested, go to Hike and sign up on the wait list, and let them know. Like part of the what we have in there is we have a wait list, and you tell us what state you're in. If you're in a state we don't support, we'll tell you we don't support you right now. But that list of who is signing up and what states they're in is how we decide. We can only build so many states at once, but that list is how we decide what state we go to next. So, you know, more votes for Kentucky means we'll, we'll get there faster. Okay, great. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Sure. Um, questions on how the rest of this stuff works? Questions on taxes in general or, you know, th tell me, what do you got? 
And you're a certified accountant, correct, Andrew? Mm-hmm. Certified public accountant is technically the, the term, which is different than an accountant, but yes. Okay, thanks. I have a quick question for you, Andrew. This is Holly again. Um, so I was in California previously for a number of years, and I do have um, a, a CPA. I have someone that does all my filing for me. He is back in California. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd be, I guess my situation is I'd be interested in still continuing to use him. What would the benefit be if I were to use Hike? Um, plus my um, plus my person that does my my tax filing um, you'd be double paying um, mm-hmm. because you're gonna pay him to do the taxes and you're gonna pay us to do the taxes as well but we're all, not all of us are gonna do it um, typically we don't take people on the hype platform that we're not also filing tax returns for um, because the whole system is built around optimizing from your books to your tax projections to your payroll and all that stuff together Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very difficult to do that with outside parties. But the, part of the whole benefit and magic of the hype thing is that the whole, the whole process is integrated. Um, and that's one of the major improvements that, that we've built on hype because, you know, hype didn't invent S corp, we didn't invent QuickBooks. Um, but the difference is all this stuff has existed and lots of freelancers have already had this kind of a setup running before I've said it. I mean, I've been setting up for people for, um, eight, 10 years, but Freelancers were always stuck having to stitch this stuff together and be the quarterback. And the major benefit to Hike is that we're stitching it all together into one place and making it a more seamless experience for you. Um, so I would say there's lots of benefits to Hike. I'd say you'd be missing the primary ones by staying with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not that I want to not sell you on Hike, but um, <laughs> you, you, you'd be missing out on the real secret sauce, I think, of Hike. No, that, yeah. that does make sense. Thank you. And that is one of my concerns too, right? Like I have a strong mm-hmm. relationship with my CPA. He's seen me grow and shrink and go sideways and go, you know, all sorts of different ways. Pretty much he knows where all the bodies are buried, right? So moving yep. to a new CPA is a little scary sometimes. Absolutely. Um, especially working for someone, you know, with your cost structure too. It seems like it's like, wow, that's really inexpensive. I'm spending like two to $3,000 a month for my accounting firm, right? Yeah. For, for example. Yeah. So I'm I would argue, why, why is this um, so compelling is my question. I like, uh, I mean, good question. And lots of people have really strong relations with their CPAs. Um, but um, now, if you're, you're spending that much Brent also on accounting, you're probably also getting a lot more bookkeeping services and data management and stuff like that. But the reality yes. is, and I'll say a couple of things. <clears throat> I'm sure that your CPA is a wonderful person. I'm sure he's a nice guy or gal. I'm sure they're great to get, hang out with. And yeah, they've been there a long time for you. However, comma, the fact that they run their business in a not efficient way, um, the fact that they haven't offered to make you an S corp yet is shocking to me, right? So you start to think about this and go, okay, well, how much are they really looking? If, if this is the first I've ever heard of this and the fact that I'm going to save a bunch of money in taxes, why was this guy not doing this before for me? Right. It's hilarious um, you say that because that's exactly what I thought when I saw the presentation. When, and frankly, when I was talking to the, the, you know, just you guys getting this thing set up, right? I was like, wait a second. Why has this never been brought up before? Um, I was going to give my guy the benefit of the doubt until after I saw this. But that's the first question I'm going to have is like, hey, <laughs> why the hell am I not an S Corp? Right. And why hasn't this been discussed? So there's two main reasons why it's not been discussed. And well, there could be a lot of reasons. But there's two main ones, Get, call it 80-20. There's an 80% chance it's one of two reasons. Reason number one, accountants, as a general rule, are not a dynamic, quick-changing, decision-making bunch, right? So um, <laughs> they, they don't want to do different stuff. They don't want to take any risks. They don't want to make any arguments. They don't want to make anything different. And the entire um, business model of an accounting firm is built on getting the work done as quickly as possible, which means if I have to go out and do more stuff where you be proactive, it's going to cost me more time, which means I'm going to, I'm, I'm, which means my profit margins go down. So the more you stay the same, the more profitable my business becomes. So I'm incentivized to not introduce change into your life and into the, into your thing, unless you bring this stuff to me. You see this constantly, almost all independent CPA operators are reactionary people that if you bring them something, they will answer the question and they'll answer your question well, typically, and give you good, solid advice. But if you're not driving it, they're not going to bring it to you. Not unless you get to much, much higher levels of accountants, which most of us don't deal with. Um, the second is going to come down to, there's a lot of people who are 
the reasonable comp and what that percent of reasonable comp is, is a legal argument. It's, an, it's a tax argument. It's an argument that they're going to make. A lot of accountants don't want to have to defend it and they don't want to take the risk of being wrong, which means they will only take a position that they know they can defend with 100% certainty. And this is also where your interests typically are not aligned with theirs because you would want to take a more aggressive position. But the problem becomes them protecting their license and only making arguments they can 100% win means you lose because it means I have to make a more conservative argument and a more conservative argument in tax land means more taxes for you, less deductions for you. And so there are a lot of CPAs out there that just go, well, I don't think it's reasonable and I don't want to defend it. So I'm not going to make the argument that the comp should be this much smaller or lower. Um, and that's the other big reason is they're, they don't want to make the argument and they're not willing to take the risk and it costs you taxes to do that. Yeah. And I can see that, right. My, my accountants are pretty accountant like, um, and you know, it makes sense, I guess. I, I, yeah, it's, it's like us as, as consultants, right? We don't want to like throw out crazy recommendations to a client. We want to keep the client happy and keep them paying our services every single month. You know, we, yes, we need to get them uh, positive results, but if they're getting positive results, why throw a monkey wrench in the whole thing? Yeah. It's, and well, I feel like there's like a legal aspect to this too, right? Like, there, oh, feels like it's almost like it's a legal recommendation and coming from an accounting firm. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge my accounting firm too much on it, but it well, is. And I, and I would, and I remember your accounting firm is a broad, probably a broad based accounting firm, name and name and associates, right? CPAs. It, yep. it, 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 and they've got clients all over the place. Okay. Whereas hike, this is what we do. We built our own reasonable comp formulas. We've looked at all the best practices. We built our own formula for calculating this stuff. We're not afraid to defend this and aggressively defend it because I don't need to learn everything in the tax universe. We only take freelancers. We only take people that were this, where it's, this is going to fit and we know it really well, which is why we're able to make that argument. So if you show up and go, well, I'm gonna bring my manufacturing business to hike, we're gonna say no, because that's not how we're set up. And so it's unusual for CPA firms and tax firms and professional services firms to specify that far down to a niche. Um, but that's one of the reasons why hike can be, I mean, it's just basic business. If you have a niche model, a niche business with niche customers, you can get more economies of scale. You can provide a lower cost because I have lower cost of production because I don't have to, I don't have to support a wide range of customers. I've got a customers on a path and that that's why it becomes so much less expensive and so much more dynamic than a traditional CPA firm because we, we zoomed in on this one problem. Great. I don't want to dominate the call, guys. Any What other questions do we have going on here? Um, Michael, I see you joined. Uh, I haven't heard much from you, et cetera. I just want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak. Hey. Uh, oh, I didn't realize I was on not on mute this whole time, so I'm sorry if I've been distracting. Um, we didn't hear you at all, buddy. Okay, great. Uh, Any questions from anybody else, including Michael? Oh, well, this is not your only chance. If you do have more questions or you hang up and think of something, um, you can go to Hike, you can get on, you know, sign up there. Uh, we can get you scheduled with an intro call. You can talk to one of the tax pros there, ask other questions like this. Like I said, it's not your only chance, but um, you know, just let us know if we can, uh, we can be of help. Great. Well, I really appreciate you guys stepping in, uh, chatting with us uh, for a little bit. Again, you know, I found it super helpful um, when I heard about it and um, you know, I, this is stuff I just don't know a lot about. I think a lot of uh, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, small niche agencies, et cetera, um, you know, we, we probably got to where we are by being really good at, you know, digital marketing or whatever form of, of uh, solopreneur entrepreneur we are. And um, it's kind of grew into it. And I know me personally, I joke all the time that I'm really great at SEO being a CEO and not so much. Right. And so this is our, our opportunity to, to off weight some of the stuff, learn from you guys. And, um, and I appreciate the time that you guys took to, to do that. So I um, appreciate everyone showing up to the call as well for those that attended. And, um, you know, I'm here to help ask any questions or um, help answer uh, anything that you guys may have. 
and uh, appreciate the time. So anything else, Andrew, before you close? If you guys, you know, tell your friends, if you think you got, you get some more of you, got more questions, I'm happy to jump back on. As you can imagine, I've done this presentation a couple of times. Um, in case you couldn't tell that from the uh, speed at which I can do it, but i um, happy to jump back on with your crew again at some point in the future. You know, we'll circle back in 90 days or so. And if you guys want to see it again or ask more questions, feel free to let us know. We'd be happy to come back. Sweet. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, sir. Have a great day.